Hello everyone, welcome to Next Race. Today we will be discussing a fascinating research topic in the chemical science field which is NRR, what we call electrochemical nitrogen reduction reaction. As the name suggests, in this process nitrogen is converted to ammonia or other derivative compounds by the use of electrical energy and catalysts. But we know about the Haber-Bose process, right? The Haber-Bose process is a well established and widely used method for industrial production of ammonia. The process was first invented by Fritz Seber and Karl Bose in the early 20th century and revolutionized the production of ammonia, which is a crucial compound in the production of fertilizers and other chemical compounds. The Haber-Bose process involves the reaction of nitrogen gases and hydrogen gas in the presence of an iron-based catalyst and high temperature and pressure. This reaction converts the nitrogen and hydrogen into ammonia. The process is uh, highly efficient and allows for the large scale production of ammonia. So why we needed the NRR is a very big question. There are mainly two big things that come into play when we talk about the requirement and implication implementation of the NRR process. Firstly, the huge energy requirements and secondly, the global warming caused by the greenhouse gases evolved in the industrial ammonia production process. Now coming to the NRR process. In the electrochemical nitrogen reduction reaction process, nitrogen gas is electrochemically reduced to ammonia or other nitrogen containing compounds. The reaction occurs at cathode of an electrochemical cell which acts as the site of reaction. Some primary components of the electrochemical cells are shown in the slide. These are the use of a nitrogen gas cylinder a working electrode, reference electrode, counter electrode, a nephron membrane and obviously an electrocatalyst. So if you want to learn in details about the electrodes, you can learn it from any electrochemistry book or you can also see it on YouTube. It's available. So NRR takes place on the surface of the catalyst. A good NRR catalyst must obey Sabatier principle which states the optimum catalytic activity for a reversible reaction is typically achieved when the catalyst surface is neither too strongly absorbing nor too weakly absorbing for the reactants and intermediates involved in the reaction. In other words, the catalyst should have an intermediate affinity for the reactants to ensure efficient reaction rates. So following the Sabatier principle, in our process can happen in five mechanistic pathways and as shown in the slide as schematic diagram. These are very advanced signs if you ever work in NRR you would uh, need to learn in this uh, in details. Coming to the application portions, some of the applications of NRR are uh, mentioned here. Firstly, sustainable fertilizer production. Developing efficient NRR catalyst and systems could offer a more sustainable environmental friendly approach to ammonia production for agriculture applications. Secondly, renewable energy storage. Ammonia has uh, widely gained attention as a potential carrier for hydrogen for renewable energy storage and transportation. Thirdly, environmental remediation. The NRR has the potential to convert nitrogen oxides, which are harmful air pollutants, into valuable nitrogen containing compounds by electrochemically reducing nitrogen oxides, converting harmful substances into useful chemical products. Chemical synthesis, nitrogen containing compounds such as amines and hydrazines are essential building blocks in the chemical industry. The NRR could offer a sustainable and efficient route for the synthesis of these compounds replacing the traditional method that often rely on fossil derived feedstocks. And one of the advanced research uh, topics on this field that is the fuel cells. This research aims to develop ammonia based fuel cells as an alternative energy conversion technology. Although having such advantages in NRR is not yet popular as the yield which is measured from paradigm efficiency is very low. However, not mentioned before that the yield of ammonia in an electrochemical cell is generally estimated from the interphenol blue method or one can also use advanced data for NMR uh, if the yield can be made higher it's sure that this would uh, in future be industrially commercialized these are some of the sources from which I have taken some pieces of information this is not it if you want to learn more go to Google Scholar and do your own literature survey if you want some research updates in science you can subscribe to my channel only on next race thank you everyone